Well, hey there, my friend, Abby from Abby Kirsten Collections here. And in this video, we are talking about the warping feature. Now it is important to note right out of the gate that this warping feature is exclusive to Cricut Access subscribers. So if you are not a Cricut Access subscriber, you will not be able to use the warping feature. Um, that is also similar to how the monogram maker works and things like that using certain images and that kind of stuff. But for those of us who are Cricut Access users or plan to become them, I wanted to just visit a brief tutorial on the warping. It's one of those tools in design space that I say is, is fairly straightforward. It's really a matter of pushing a button, but there's a few different things that you can do to tweak it. So I thought I'd give an example of that. So I'm going to start by grabbing some text. The warping feature is only compatible with text. So you can't warp images or anything like that at this time. It's just for text. So over here in our design panel, we have our text button and I'm going to click on that and it's going to put some text here onto our canvas and I'm going to bring it right over here. And to edit the text, you would double click inside of the box and then let's just shoot. I'm just going to pick like a cutesy phrase. So just we'll say we'll do be kind. Actually, I'm going to do all caps be kind. Okay. And then we could click off to get that transformation box to reappear. Now I want to change this font. So I'm going to go up with this text selected, go up here to the top left hand side and select the font drop down. I'm going to pick something from my system fonts because we know that the Cricut fonts are going to work just fine with the warp feature. Let's play with it with our own system fonts that we would download potentially for free or just, you know, other things that we would like to use in general for ourselves. Maybe we purchased a font from somewhere else. Um, I'm going to use one of my favorite fonts called Creative Vintage. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to change our font there. Let's also change the color. I'll just make it a purple and I'm going to scale this up a bit. Just coming to one of these corners and clicking and dragging to scale up. Okay. Now that we have our text typed out, we've chosen our font. Uh, let's go ahead and play with the warping tool. Now there's a couple of things I want to note with the warping and let me just double click in here real quick. Cause I want to demonstrate this before I go any further. I'm going to repeat this, um, down here. I created a second line by hitting enter on my keyboard. So you double click inside your text box. You can hit enter to go to the next line. And then now you've created multiple lines. So what I wanted to show you before I went any further is that the warp feature will work with multiple, um, with multiple lines like this. So if I select an option, let me zoom out here. We see that the warp feature works just fine with multiple line breaks like that. Okay. But I want to undo that real quick and then show you what happens if we select multiple lines outside of a single text box. So I'm going to duplicate this and let's say I have these two bits of text here and I want to click and drag over both of those. And then I wanted to apply warp to all of them at once. You can't do that. We can see the warp is grayed out here. So always make sure that you're either using line breaks here and then you can apply the warping or you can ungroup to lines, then apply the warping feature individually to each line. So I just want to bring that to your attention real quick. If you're using it, the warp feature and you're selecting a bunch of stuff and you're like, why is it not working? That might be it. So just use that ungroup to lines option there. But let me get this one off of my screen here and we'll go back to our original. So let's select this and go up to warp. And then you will see there are several options. Make sure you scroll all the way down because there are additional options if you scroll. Okay. You see there's quite a few different features here. I'm going to bring this over here so we can actually see what's happening. <laughs> uh, let's just pick one to play with. So I'll try that one. That's cute. I like that because it's very subtle. Um, let's try this one. That one's cute. It makes it fatter in the middle there. I like that. I really like, what was my favorite one? I think, yes, the wavy one here, this is my favorite. So let's take that as an example. This option here, as well as any of these other warp options that you're seeing here can be adjusted. So it'll usually default somewhere in the middle ish area, but if you take it all the way over to one side, 
it'll eventually take it back to the original state of no warping, or you can take it all the way up to 100 and it'll be a much more extreme result to the warp. Uh, you can undo a warp at any time here. So if you're like, I wanna get the warp to go away, you can just hit undo warp or even just take the slider down to zero and you'll be back to your original state of your um, font or text. But I like mine a little bit more extreme. So we're gonna actually, let's bring it down just a bit here. And this is a system font I'm using and it's working pretty well overall. Um, these are very boxy letters. So I think that's causing some of the additional little like warping here, but I'm still gonna give it a try. So we're gonna leave it like that and I'll just click off and now we have our result. Now, if you decide you wanna edit this text after you've applied warping, you can still do that just by double clicking in here. You're gonna see it revert to its normal self. So maybe I want to, maybe I don't want it to be all caps and I want it to be just like that instead. You can do that by double clicking, typing out what you want and then click off again and it'll change it back to the warped result. Okay, so um, it's, you still can edit even after you've warped. The fun things I like about warping is how you can encompass the warping feature with images. So as an example, I have a little flower image over here in my layers panel. Maybe I created this text here and it has this wavy warp happening. And then maybe I brought in a little image and I scaled it and rotated it to sort of fit and complement the warping of the text. I'm just gonna duplicate this, Command D on my keyboard or Control if you're on a PC. And I'm just gonna actually rotate this all the way this way like that. So I like that with the warping, you can really use it to improve um, the synergy between text and imagery. So that's a lot of fun. Or if you have sort of a really playful font like this one up here, don't worry, be happy, um, and you're using different uh, aspects of the warping, you can create sort of like a bubble effect. So this sort of looks like it's got this warped sort of round effect sort of punching it out at us here. The way I did that is I took this top one here and typed out this word. I went to warp and I chose this sort of arching option at the top. And then for my second word, I chose this middle option where it makes it look bigger in the middle and then fades out on the sides. And then for the bottom one, I mixed in the very opposite of the top one. So you can see we have this one that I started with, with the word don't, and then this one with be happy. And it created sort of this bubble sort of effect to it, super fun. So warping is pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to it other than to click and play around uh, with the results and have a lot of fun with it. It works with Cricut fonts, it works with system fonts. Uh, you just gotta play around with which ones play the best with, um, the warping functions. I also want to note that there are some fonts that are not compatible with warp, such as multi-layer fonts. So I was clicking around and I found out that not all the fonts are compatible, even the ones that are in the Cricut system. So just take note of that. I am curious though to see what happens when it says use anyway. So nothing happens at that point in time. It says use anyway, and it's just won't actually do any warping. So um, let me choose a different option here. And then we would need to bring the warp back. So maybe I do this one. Can we bring it down a bit? And then if there's awkward spacing between the lines, like maybe you wanna adjust the line space here, um, you can still do that up here with like decreasing the line space. A lot of times I like to ungroup to lines and even though that is showing, I don't know if Design Space is having a moment, but even though that is showing as a clickable option, with the warp applied, I have not been successful in ungrouping 
the lines like I normally do to make manual adjustments. So I'm not sure if that's something they're still working out or if that's the way it will permanently be. Um, but I just wanted to take note of that as well there. All right, so what do you think about the warping feature? Is it something you're excited to try out? Tell me below in the comments and I'd be happy to chat with you about it. Bye for now.